Francisco Franco was the longest totalitarian ruler. He was born into a strongly connected military family. At age 12, he attended a private school ran by a Catholic priest, thus originating his ideals about Catholicism. He then entered a naval academy secondary school with intentions to follow in the footsteps of his father and grandfather. He then volunteered to fight against revolts and riots in Spanish-controlled Morocco in 1912 and stayed until 1926. Through those years, Franco established a reputation of fearlessness and professionalism. This characteristic led to his quick promotions and by 1920 he had been named second in command of the Spanish Foreign Legion. And three years later, he took full command as a result of suppressing the Moroccan Rebellion. The Moroccan Rebellion threatened to trigger the spread of socialism through Spain. He took it upon him this strike with ruthless military leads, clearly illustrating his attitudes towards the threat of socialism in his home country. Franco believed in fascism and wanted to control a totalitarian government. Fascism was created in reaction to the spread of socialism. The wealthy supported fascism in order to protect their wealth. In his rule, only fascism was allowed and he despised communists. To ensure his success as a ruler, he allied with Hitler to win the Spanish Civil War. Franco was a nationalist, so when they won the Spanish Civil War, he overthrew the republic. Franco then outlawed all unions and religions except his own religion, Catholicism. He also banned the Catalan and Basque languages. In order to rid his country of those who challenged his power, he created a secret police union. Franco also allowed some capitalism during his rule. Thanks a lot. During Franco's reign, he ran a fascist-style dictatorship, even though he was not considered a true fascist. He adopted nationalism, authoritarianism, Catholicism, anti-Freemasonry, and anti-communism. When Franco came into power, there were a lot of unskilled people working because the skilled workers had been removed for their skilled positions. During Franco's reign, he had somewhere between 15,000 and 50,000 of his political opponents killed. He obviously ran an authoritarianism type of government. Other political parties were suppressed or tightly controlled. Franco's nationalism promoted a unitary identity by repressing Spain's cultural diversity. The Catholic Church upheld as the established church. Because of this, divorce, contraceptives, contraceptives and abortion were forbidden. While Franco didn't join the Nazis' efforts in World War II, he did negotiate with them and received help from them during the Spanish Civil War. Franco tried to destroy all signs of cooperation with the Axis. After the war, Spain's fa fascist deals kept it out of, of Spain's fascist ideals kept it out of the United Nations and NATO. However, in 1950, Spain's strategic location and anti-communist ideals led the U.S. to reconsider them as a military partner. Imagine being killed and thrown into a mass grave. While many believe that Franco was a mass murderer and had many different mass graves, towards the last strands of his rule, he started to loosen up a little bit from his past years of a harsh dictatorship. Over time, he removed his censorship, instituting economic reforms, and promoting international tourism. Right before his death, he named Prince Juan Carlos the next ruler of Spain. Juan spent a lot of time alongside Franco in his early years. He pressed for change immediately upon taking the throne, including the legalization of political parties. Franco was buried in a huge mausoleum at the Valley of the Fallen. Archaeologists have tried for some time to locate the remains of a poet slash play writer, Federico Garcia Lorca, who was killed by Franco's men. When Francisco died, Spain was Spain was good. The new leader treated everyone well and focused more on internal armies than on a big army for defense. Overall, Franco had a very successful rule in Spain, even though he was accused of killing thousands.